Hello, it's uh, Robert Craven here, and I'm absolutely delighted to have as a guest today uh, the wonderful Dennis, Dennis Yu. Absolutely brilliant to have you uh, on board. Uh, hello, Dennis. Good to see you again. I wonder who's got more books in the background, you or me, Robert? <laughs> I think I think you have, but I could I could find some more books if you want, and you'll probably notice that these books are actually all the same. They're not mine, but they're uh, they're books that I give to clients. It's the same, you know. You, you really need to read this book. You really need to read this book. And yeah, you know, Dennis and I met. Uh, we were just talking about it just now in Slovenia at the In Orbit um, um, conference. It's one of those things where I actually just had I had a Dennis. Uh, uh, blog to read. I hadn't got around reading it. I straight off coming on stage, full of adrenaline. There was Dennis. Dennis and I talked probably for 30, 45 minutes. I go back and look at the blog, and the blog is a head heading something like, Who is the most important person you should speak to when you come off stage? So it was Dennis. So that's great. <laughs> uh, not everyone that well, some people don't know who you are, Dennis. So would you just, would you just like to introduce yourself? Why why should people know about you? What are you what are you known for now? What are you doing? Just a, a quick covering of who you are. I was an early Yahoo employee. I built the internal analytics. That was about 20 years ago. And I've been a big fan of small data. So whether it's at a search engine or mining Facebook data for better targeting to be able to power agencies to create processes and checklists. That's been our thing. And we seek to create jobs for young adults that go through our training, get certified, and get to work on the MBA or Rosetta Stone or large retailers in the United States or Nike and Red Bull, all the way down to smaller retailers or folks like dentists and doctors. And I just love being able to produce jobs because I believe digital marketing can be akin to like being a doctor in a hospital instead of being a witch doctor or being able to fix cars or anything where there is a legitimate certification. And the more that that can be systematized, the less hocus pocus there is. And I'm just tech support. That's the best way to think about me. I'm not some magic guy, you know, behind the curtain. I was at, you know, you and I, we fly a lot. I was at the airport a couple of days ago and one of my friends, he, he, he was making fun of some guy who had status, right? Do you have status on any of the airlines, Robert? Yeah. Okay. Well, some of them, you know, are really big on their status. And apparently he couldn't get an upgrade or something like that. He wasn't treated like royalty. And he said, do you know who I am? And my friend went up to him and, and said to everybody, hey, this guy, did, can someone help him? He doesn't know who he is. So when people say like, hey, Dennis, who are you? I'm tempted to trot that joke out. I mean, we did years and years and years ago, I ran um I ran outside catering Glastonbury Festival. We took 80, 90 people there. And we, and we used to do the backstage catering as well. And, uh, and there's this thing about ticketing and you can't give people food unless they've got, you know, unless they've got things. And we had the identical thing with this famous pop star. I'm not going to say who, you are, who, who she was, but it kind of gives some clues. Uh, she comes up and says, hey, I want blah, 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 blah. And my young member of staff says, um, give me a ticket and, and she does exactly <laughs> the same thing. Do you know who I am? Except this time it was like, everyone, we've got someone who doesn't know who they are. <laughs> 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 um, so our, our agenda today uh, is a couple of exciting things, which is one, we had a really great conversation on Facebook about when businesses fall apart. We've both had businesses which fall apart. I um, yeah. Yours was probably slightly larger than mine, but that thing when... Uh, partnership turns into into parting I think is probably the best way of describing it and uh, and I think there's so many things about why it happens how we can yeah. stop it happening resilience what it teaches us the other yeah. thing is uh, obviously your 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 sweet spot at the moment uh, which was our conversation in Slovenia which was about you know employing millennials employing snowflakes yeah. and as many people go oh no nah, because it has become so, for so many reasons, it's become difficult employing millennials. And finally, I, I'd like to wrap up with some, you know, some of your, your, uh, should we say, challenging uh, beliefs about advertising, Facebook advertising, and SEO. And we'll, we'll let you go for as long as you want on that. So without further ado, uh, do you recall the story that you were, were alluding to? Uh, <laughs> Uh, when businesses fall apart. 
all of us that are honest in the agency world know that we are all on the edge of the wheels coming off of our wagon, right? Mm -hmm. And what I've learned from doing the agency thing for almost 20 years, because I was running an agency even when I was at Yahoo, is that it's a people business and people will say whatever. And just like with relationships, significant others and wives, there's friction in working with these other people. And you can pretend a pretty good game until eventually things come out, people steal from you. So I had a co-founder that stole blind from me. And in the US, non-compete rules on poaching are really hard to enforce, especially for a California corporation. And it was someone that I built the entire company around. His face was on everything. He keynoted internationally. He was on CNN talking about the Facebook controversy. I built this guy up. You can see his picture back behind me with Mark Zuckerberg, right? <laughs> and then he ran off with the client. And the, the client said, well, he didn't take good care of him. So he came to us. And I hope you understand we're not going to continue to pay the retainer because now we have him working on us directly. So we don't have to pay the fee to you, which is the overhead, is the agency. And I'm sure a lot of us in the agency world, we see that kind of thing happening. You know, you can't keep people forever. They need to change jobs. You have to create opportunities for them. But there is a right way for that to happen. And more importantly for us as agency owners, we have to be prepared for when disaster of different types strike. So when you lose a client, when you lose a key partner, if you run out of money, if a contractor that you subcontracted to doesn't come through with the website or the landing page or whatever it is, do you have a process? And prior to doing the stuff at Yahoo, I worked at American Airlines and I learned about failure. I learned about graceful failure, which is you expect, you know, hope for the best plan for the worst. You expect that the avionics don't work. So this is secondary. You expect that a pilot or a flight attendant doesn't show up because they're sick. So there's a backup. You expect that there's weather. So you carry extra fuel, enough to fly to the next nearest airport and then another 90 minutes. There are a lot of rules like that. And I think as an agency, if you don't prepare for these things, when they strike, you will get absolutely hammered. So I want to share, let's see if I can share my screen. I wanna show you how we think about this and how we were able to overcome. So I like to think about recipes. I like to eat, right? You can see this belly. This is proof that you don't build a belly like this in a few months. It takes years. <laughs> so I love, I love food. And I think, of thing, I think of recipes as repeatable processes. This is me and fortune cookies. You know, fortune cookies were invented not in China, but in San Francisco, right? <laughs> or Ben and Jerry's wasn't invented in or, you know, Europe. Or the haagen wasn't invented in the Bronx. So if you have menus and if things go wrong... And let's be honest, right? If you have an agency, things go wrong all the time, but you don't want to admit it to the client, right? When everyone asks, how are you doing? Oh yeah, everything's doing great. You know, people lie to each other like that, right? All that kind of lip service. But what happens when one of these things hits you? Do you have a process so that you can keep operating? If your car gets a flat tire, do you have a spare, right? And what I've learned the hard way is that when problems happen, agencies are always dealing with problems. Like, here's my guy who's the assistant chef. I built this guy up, right? There's a process. So you can see, I built this guy up, the Gary Vaynerchuk, Mark Zuckerberg, all these things. Even made a plan for him to be unveiled as the CEO at Social Media Marketing World, which is the big conference for those people to do social media marketing. This yep. is the plan that we had agreed to, right? Where it's sophisticated. We, we put media on top of packages, on top of articles, on top, on top of everything behind the system, built around a guy where his name is on everything. And when he left us, he completely abandoned us. As you see happened, you know, the millennials often don't give you the two weeks, right? So left, imagine you're in this situation, the person you built a company around just leaves you. You buy him a brand new truck, $55,000 to stay for 24 months, but he takes the truck anyway and then goes to the client. Uh, tough the needle, which is a mattress company, right? And this is what you get. You, now you have a mess. You have 8,000 emails. You have base camp tasks. You have projects. You have all kinds of promises. You have lots of clients that all are depending on certain things. Teammates are wondering what's going on. Clients are saying, where's Logan, right? What do you do, Robert? Uh, I would have a recipe. <laughs> I'm, I'm, actually, <laughs> I'm thinking, uh, so I've, I've actually, I mean, I've fallen out with 
with staff and I've fallen out with um, with 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 co-founders before we actually signed anything, which is okay. Uh, so we hadn't actually we had no proper skin in the game, but never uh, something quite quite like this. So you're you know I'm just thinking. <laughs> recipe, 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 recipe. Have you ever been in a hotel and sometimes they wake you up on a Saturday morning at seven o'clock to test the emergency alarm system or something, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. And and they're testing it not because they're trying to irritate you. It's because they they want to know that when there is an emergency that everything works and that the alarms are there and that people can evacuate in time within however many seconds until the building burns down or something like that, right? Yeah. So we have, we have gone through drills to know that if any one bad thing happens, our company will con- be able to continue and, in, in fact, be able to thrive. And this it's is interesting. We've so, so we've got, I mean, behind me, you'll see there's uh, Atul Gawande's checklist manifesto. So we have, oh, yeah. so we have, we have, a, we have a checklist for if I die. Okay. So that's, we've got that one in place. <laughs> um, and how the business will continue and where everything is and yeah. what to do. Uh, just like I've got one for if I, if I die for the family, ironically, about what tunes I want played and poems. Oh, my goodness. But, um, but, I don't, but, but, but for a co-founder, yeah, I think you need it. And I'm just thinking, I'm just going through a couple of, couple of my, the, the agencies that I work in. I chair a couple of agencies. Yeah. And, I'm not, and I'm, not, I'm not sure that we don't have this blind faith in most of those agencies that the co-founders will continue as, uh, forever and ever and ever. And if one of them drops out, everyone will move to, 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 to accommodate it. But I also know, you know, I also know that, you know, the, the, the business would not be the same. So, 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 what, so tell us what happened. So this is what we did. Because we know everything that we do in our company is driven by a checklist. The way we have meetings, the way we do reports, the way we set up our tracking, the way we do whatever, so that everyone knows in a checklist, here's exactly what's supposed to happen. Oh, by the way, I commented on snow teeth whitening, where Logan is doing side work that other people don't seem to know about. And I I wondered about their, their negative reviews on Groupon. And Floyd Mayweather commented, saying, oh, that's not us. I was like, that's pretty good, influencer marketing. Anyway, so here I've got all my... You're not bitter, to be clear. You're not bitter. No, it's, it's I'm, you know, whatever doesn't kill me makes me stronger. <laughs> <laughs> right? So you've got all these materials, all these materials, but then here's what we do, right? Anything that he was working on, we have someone else who can come in and do that particular task. So the way we do measurement and set up custom audiences and new reporting is based on something we call digital plumbing. And every one of these maps back to, I'll click on one of them, maps back to a particular task with training on how we actually do that, right? So we can pick right up. Add an ad account, and it says if you already have one, you can. See, stuff like that. Right. So we can figure out exactly where every single project is. We use Basecamp for these things, right? For different parts of targeting, or when we're tuning ads, right? Every one of these things is here, including how we operate at conferences. So if I wasn't able to speak when we were together in Slovenia, then I have someone else who can come and deliver the presentation, hopefully with maybe not with the same, you know, storytelling that I might have, but at least deliver the key concepts, right? Because they know what the stories are. They know, you know, the ingredients. Maybe they don't have the most delicious hamburger, but it's still a hamburger, right? And as a result, every time we have had a failure, Robert, we use that as a learning experience to think, how do we create a, a, not a process that's fail-proof, but a process that can heal where, like in the airline industry, this is where I learned, what happens when that flight attendant doesn't show up for work? Do they have to stop everything at the airline and stop the airport? There's always someone else that can come in. And I've had mentors that are far more successful than me. I'm nobody compared to these other people that have taught me and they said, this is something I didn't want to believe for 10 years. They said, everybody is replaceable. Yeah. No matter how amazing you think they are, they are replaceable. And you need to get over that. And when my boss, who is a CEO of American Airlines, you know what his first thing was on every job he's ever had? 
replace yourself. That's the very first thing that he does. And so I've taken that to heart. So that's, look at that. I mean, that's, that's of kind of the, it's almost going back to um, working with, uh, what's his name, Error, uh, the E-Myth. Is it, is it, is yeah. it a basis, isn't it? Where, where it's about just seeing the whole thing as a machine, working yep. on your, what, creating a machine, working on, not in, and getting mm -hmm. out of the way, not building the business around yourself. Absolutely. And not getting enamored with the glamour of being an agency owner or being a rock star, but being more someone who is behind the scenes, more like a shareholder, more, in this case, like a master chef, but maybe not like Gordon Ramsay, right? <laughs> Very good. Very good. And therefore, I have, not to boast, but I've been practicing this. this you know, like the movie Groundhog Day? Yeah. I feel like it's my life is Groundhog Day because for the last 20 years, I've taken young adults that are graduating from college or getting their first job and seeing what's the best way to get them to operate in an agency environment. And I can tell you, when I first started, it was terrible. It was a Frankenstein approach. And I, I thought that some things were obvious, but they didn't understand. They, I thought that they could have all have discipline. I thought they all could write and speak properly. I thought they could all. And so through the progression of Groundhog Day every day, when I see failure, we start over. I wake up in bed again in the morning. It starts the day over, right? You have another fresh young grad and you try another recipe. You try another process until it fails. And then when it fails, you, you stop and think, what do you need to do? Right? Because it's easy to say, well, the millennials, they're young and entitled and they're snowflakes and need awards for attendance. But I think that that's oversimplifies the fact that we are all as human beings. When we were young, we need encouragement and we need to have direction. It's not that they don't have motivation. It's they don't have direction. Right? and the encouragement and the whole ADD and the cell phones and all that kind of thing. How do we make it so that they can thrive and we can take advantage of what they're good at? And I found, and maybe you guys who are listening, my pain, all the backs, uh, the, the stab wounds in my back, all of those, I can save you some pain. I found, for example, that young adults are good when it comes to things like pulling out your phone and making one minute videos with the client that old people like you and me, Robert, don't want to do. People like me think that cameras are things that only come out during weddings and, you know, funerals and things like that, right? So use them where they're – but things they don't, they don't want to do is write like a 10-page report. They don't want to mess with landing pages. They don't want to do these other things. So you know what? We don't force them to do that. We put it all to the VAs. We have 70 VAs in the Philippines. I've, di I've discovered the hard way that young adults, for the most part – I know I'm generalizing – they don't want to learn to do everything. They're not necessarily committed to something for the long term. You need to demonstrate that what they're working on has immediate impact where they can study one piece of training, gamify, you know, points, leveling, unlocking, unlock that particular task, work on it, see immediate results with the client. For example, that's why we start them off with remarketing. That's why we have them film one minute videos that fit into this three by three grid structure because it gives immediate feedback so they have an early win. So then they keep going and that, that way they unlock more complex skills that take longer to learn. For example, how do you do Google display ads? How do you do email marketing? That's not something we'd start people on because it's, it's delayed gratification. It takes you a lot longer to get to the point where you feel like you, you're successful. We have to load people up with immediate wins. So, Easy so two, to so, so two, remarketing to drive sales. Okay. So, so, so two things. So the first thing is where, where are all the processes stored? Where are the checklists stored? Is there a, uh, yeah, I'm let me show you. Checklists and what's that on? Uh, we use this amazing piece of technology called Google Sheets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and awesome. th this is a document here. Can you see this? It's called the Asset yeah. Tracker. Yeah. Okay? This, this is all. You can put the old people glasses on. Now, these are all of the courses that we teach. Now, every course that we have, you can think of that as a checklist of tasks. Therefore, a course is a package too, meaning it's an executable set of things that we do that all have training behind them. And so we have tons and tons of these, right? How we do the success tracker, which is how we report to the client, how we do project management, how we analyze a brand, how we run meetings, how we collect content, how we optimize, how we do Google ads, how we set up LinkedIn accounts, how we do like every one of these things. They're in our academy. 
We are constantly updating them from Google Drive. We have them in Basecamp. We have a package that we sell. There's a figurehead associated with it who runs that like a mini PNL, a mini business, because then they can be in charge of executing that package. So they effectively have an agency. And Blitzmetrics is more of a of a support organization with engineering and payroll and marketing and all that kind of stuff that they, these folks don't want to deal with. We provide the support so that these folks can be what we call intrapreneurs, right? And service one chiropractor and now do 50 chiropractors. Service one professional sports team, service 20 professional sports teams, right? And I can go to any one of them and I can click on it and it'll take me to the latest drive iteration here in Google Drive. We have an unlimited account when it comes to, you know, because the, the, it's all the Google apps. And then you can see it's in our academy. So we have this academy, which is LearnDash plus Mimbarium plus Infusionsoft plus a bunch of other things. And you can see there's a whole course and people can go through lessons and topics. There's a quiz at the end. They earn a badge. You have to gamify it. They have alerts. There's reminders saying that you haven't done something. There's a leaderboard. There's a news feed saying, oh, Robert hit level three. You better hurry up. Dennis, you're at level two, right? He's earned this many points. He's read three articles. He said hi to clients five times, you know, whatever it might be. And here inside Basecamp, we have a thread. So here's our dollar a day course, for example, inside Basecamp. I can go to any one of them. We have 44 courses, right? I'm not building courses for the, because I want to build courses and because I want to make money on courses, right? So you can see here, this thing goes on and on and on and on and on. Why? Because we keep improving every failure, we come back in and tune it. Every time Facebook or Google changes their UI and the screenshots are now not working, we have to redo those different components. Because we have thousands of people going through these courses and when they complain saying, oh, I went to page 32 and it doesn't look like that, then we have to come and fix it, right? So we have, 44 of these courses that we're constantly tuning, right? And, and so our training and our execution are really the same thing. So our agency is a guinea pig for the, for the training we have because the, the more guinea pigs we have, the tighter our ability to create courses and then build software to automate the reporting, automate all these other components. It's like Uber. Uber has people driving cars right now. But the second that there are self-driving cars, do you think Uber wants the people there? Mm. People are going to cause problems. They cost money. They go on strike, right? So we believe that there's a lot of automations possible, but I also believe that, that the robots and, and the AI and machine learning should serve the people and that we should have the people develop the relationships and have the software, you know, whether it's Google software. I think of all these different engines as the same thing, right? The email marketing engine, the search engine, the different social network engines, our engine that kind of brings the stuff together. We, we are not, we as humans are meant to connect with people, not meant to turn knobs and produce spreadsheets, which is the unfortunate part of what most people do with running agencies. And they just default to selling their time by the hour, right? They're just intellectual prostitutes. They're just selling their mind, right? A different kind of trick. They're selling, you know, 10% of ad spend, you know, however they want to do it but I believe it should be based on results and based on relationships. And when we put this stuff together, if any one person falters, then another team member can step in at a hospital. What happens if a nurse doesn't show up? Yeah. yeah. So the, Even so if the, you have a head doctor, the head of cardiology doesn't show up, you still can operate, right? You can okay. still run. The emergency room will, st will not shut down and all the people coming in because of car accidents and gunshot wounds, they're, they're still being taken care of, right? So your point would be, the, the, the list process system applies. And, I, and if you just go back to Gordon Ramsay, Gordon Ramsay versus McDonald's, there are just as many rules, there's just as many checklists, there's just as many, this is what the perfect steak looks like. It's like three mm -hmm. micro herbs, which are five days old, placed at 90 degrees. There's as many, there's the detail doesn't just happen. It's not just all expertise. And I think people <laughs> assume the, the checklists are, are for, for numpties and, and they're really not because I'm really glad that when you and I go in an aeroplane that the pilot's got a checklist you know and when, yeah. when I go in for an operation I'm really glad oh yeah it's just got a checklist so they don't chop off the wrong leg you know so yeah so the, so like, this is checklist on 
on steroids, which is fantastic. We have uh, a checklist on how to build checklists. So do so do we. So do we. But we don't <laughs> have we don't have this level of checklist, which I just think oh, yeah. is fantastic. And I think that uh, I think there've been lots of screen grabs probably going on during this while people are going. Oh, That's fine. Going, I'm I'm down down to, down to this. Yeah, there you go. Fantastic. Great. So just getting back to this millennial thing, because I think. Uh, so everyone knows the conversation. We've all been in bars and, and the conversation goes, Jeepers Creepers, we, we employed four, 10, 15 new young, young people and they don't get it because they don't, they don't rock up for the interviews and if they rock up for the interviews, you're often the job, they don't turn up on Monday and if you're often the job on Monday, some don't yeah. pay for a week and they've always got their heads in their phones and they don't know how to put up wear a pair of socks and they don't know how to yeah. turn up for a meeting on time. Yeah. I mean, uh, and you've obviously kind of I, I haven't cracked it. Uh, but, but, but you, but you're, it seems like you're successfully finding a way through it. Is that because you're just filtering out the good guys and gals or, or, or is it because the system works? I mean, how, how do you, how do you, get the cream well first off <clears throat> Robert we're a virtual agency and though our people that are in a certain city I think we have four people in Salt Lake City we have three or four people in LA we have people all over right maybe six people in Phoenix they'll get together but we operate virtually so the discipline necessary to succeed as a, a freelancer or contractor is absolutely necessary. Someone who could be a good employee in an office, whether they show up every day, is it to be monitored or babysat or what have you, that's different than people that come in and they are entrepreneurs and they already have the drive and they can demonstrate as part of our process. Here, I'll show you. We have this, of course we have a process that we call our digital marketing training system where they come in and they have to, this is the one we have for the military, so you have all these military people, right? We just reskin these guides. Mm. This is what happens when young adults come through. We have to update some of these. But, you know, for example, you say, hey, what do you want to do? Do you want to make some money? Is this just some, you know, college job? Do you want to take over your dad's business? Do you want to start your own agency? Do you want to work at some company like Nike? That was my dream, right? And we show other people that have gone down these paths and give them a plan. They set their goals, short, medium, long-term goals, personal, physical, professional. We call that the three by three. Hmm. Demonstrate how we hold this as not just some HR thing, but it's very important. We review it every month, right? And we want to hold you accountable. And it's not that you have a boss. It's that you have a coach. And the coach is there to help you improve, not bust you, catch you surfing porn, right? That kind of thing. Caught this guy surfing porn a few times. He was mad, right? <laughs> And help them build their network. So they see that we, it's like the problem with, with the, the hating on millennials is the f folks trying to force millennials to adapt to what your company cares about. No, find out what they care about. And it's not just, oh, follow your passion. Oh, if you like video games and sports, then do that, right? But what is it that if they set their goal that they want to raise a family and they want to move away from their mom's basement or they want to run their first marathon, then we help them achieve that goal. And because we're loyal to their goal, they effectively are loyal to us. Not that they're loyal to us, but they see that by being with us, they have more power. They have a better network. All these things will have, things are better for them when they are in our system than not in the system. So we're appealing to their sense of self preservation or self interest. Right. And you and what you're saying is, is rather than, what most agency owners, which is, which is saying, these kids just don't get it, they're not buying in, you know, we want them to be in the office by 8.30, we want them to be willing to work late, blah, blah, blah. What you're saying is, let's just, let's just help these people do what they want to do. Look, I'll make it real simple. This is what agency owners don't want to acknowledge. It's easy, look, I agree, all the things you can blame them about, about not being professional, not caring or whatever, flip that around and say, our job is to make them as productive and profitable as possible. The more profitable they are, 
the more we can pay them, the more things we can, benefits we can lavish upon them, right? The more we can gamify them. So if we have a leveling system like we have here, you can play the videos and see. Look at it, you can play any one of these videos and see like what goes on in our training system, right? Oh, hi, Personal welcome to level three. Like this is what happens next, done, being a good blah, blah, blah. Player, right? But CID allows you to work with other training, which you're getting paid $10 an hour. Blah, blah, blah. So they understand, a, they clearly see the benefit of doing these things. Not because there's a rule, if you don't show up at nine o'clock and three times you miss, we fire you. No, we reward them positively because they don't respond to negative. Because if you threaten them, okay, they'll comply and the short, okay, I'll do what I'm told, right? But then eventually they're gonna leave, right? Yeah. And no one's gonna wanna, you know, the beatings will continue until morale improves. So we start them at $10 an hour and we start to move them up and they unlock different skills. And the beauty is when they first come in, well, we're losing money on them in the first couple levels just because we're having to train them. And there's a lot of things they think that because they went to uni that they're highly skilled. <laughs> but we actually have to start them from zero. They don't realize that. When we're paying them, it's actually costing us money to train them, but they don't know that. Yes. So it's, it's actually not good. And, but now that they're starting to do things like implement remarketing, and we've, we find the things in any client that generate profit easily and reliably. So that means that not taking on certain kinds of clients that don't meet our criteria, not taking on specialists that don't meet our criteria because you don't want squeaky wheels. You don't want nightmare clients that end up just wasting your time and creating drama and all those kinds of bad things, right? The emergency room has to have triage. And so they come in and they're, they're making money easily. Well, they're making us a lot of money. And so we can pay them more and more money and it's repeatable. And if they flake out, which is one of the biggest knocks I have on young adults, they've, they'll try it for three months because Ty Lopez promised $100,000 a month in Lamborghinis if you, because digital marketing, social media or whatever, right? And they find out it's not that easy. Or what happens a lot in our company is they start to see how successful it is. And they see, oh, look, Robert and Dennis and other folks are in Slovenia and making money and having nice dinners and being in five-star hotels. So, man, if they're not working and they're taking all this money and I'm doing all this work, I'm going to, you know what, screw them. I'm going to do my own agency. And then they find out the hard way. It's not quite like that, is it? It looks easy, doesn't it, right? <laughs> so you try it yourself. Yeah, absolutely love it. Absolutely love it. That's fantastic. Um, you're, you're known to be quite spiky, quite pokey around Facebook, Facebook advertising, SEO, uh, and, 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 and you're quite often heard to be saying roughly agency owners have got it wrong, agencies have got it wrong, uh, people don't understand what's going on, they're not giving people what they want. So uh, I'm going to give you like five minutes of, of platform. Uh, your, blood pressure, your blood pressure can go as high as you want, but uh, just remember that there's, there's not an emergency room within 100 yards. So, oh, so I'm is, relaxed. What I'm is doing your, great. What, what is your position on all this? Look, I'm a capitalist, as are you. If you have an agency and you expect people to pay you money, you need to make them happy. And that means delivering profit or whatever the result is and also some bedside manners. So the perceived authority and the actual authority, the perceived semblance of results and actually delivering the results. But if you don't operate according to the process and you don't have an inbound process to gather exactly what their goals are in a measurable way, like I need to generate this much revenue with this much ROAS and what the constraints are, can I touch the website? Who's responsible for the graphics? who can make certain kinds of approvals. If I'm not absolutely clear on what the constraints are to be able to achieve that goal, then it's a matter of, you know, politics. Do you like red or do you like blue for the button? I don't know what well, the big boss, the hippo says it should be green. Okay, fine. We'll make it green. And you saw this heated argument. I pissed off a bunch of SEO people. You probably saw the last couple of days. Look, I was there in the beginning over 20 years ago. Bruce Clay and all these other folks are good friends of mine, right? I keynote with Rand Fishkin and other people. Like, I'm part of that crowd. You, I worked at a search engine. Go ahead and slam me, right? I worked at a search engine for five years. Come on, right? I know. I know how SEO is. So, for example, I said, you know, most of you SEOs are snake oil sellers. Not that you're intentionally doing this. It's friendly fire. I said, the world has changed around SEO. And guess what? 
the goal of SEO, the reason, you know, do you think businesses, Robert, want SEO? Do you think people are thinking at night, oh, I want better SEO? No, they want traffic and traffic that drives sales. They want to make more revenue, right? So SEO is not something you do. This is for me. I, I worked at a search engine. I did SEO supposedly. I, I drive more organic Google search results. Would you call that SEO? There's things that you might have to do to, to do that, right? Produce good content. Get good links. Make your site run fast. Make sure the search engines can see your website. Make sure that you delight your customers so they say good things about you that, that lead to good reviews that then cause you to rank better in search engines. And I'm not trying to cater to the robot. I'm trying to cater to the human. And when I take care of the human, I take care of the customer, all these SEO things. Are, I'll give you an example, Robert. So, you, you know, there are a lot of people Googling for Facebook advertising, right? You'd figure that's a pretty competitive term, yeah? Yep. So the first couple of years when Facebook launched their platform, I did no SEO. I didn't do any of this like on page or cloaking or meta descriptions or keyword density or any of the site maps. I didn't do any of the things that the SEO people talk about yet. If you did a search on Facebook advertising, I rank number two in Google. Now, you know, who's number one, facebook.com slash ads. So wasn't exactly going to be that one. Right? So I was up at number two. Is it because I did SEO? No, it's because I did good things for humans, created great content, great relationships. And because of that, the result, SEO is the result, not the activity, right? And I think a lot of us miss from an agency standpoint, do you think clients want WordPress or landing pages or Infusionsoft or Facebook ads? They don't want any of that. They want the result. Focus on the result. What you deliver is more leads for chiropractors. You deliver more store visits for furniture companies at $7 or less. That's what we do for Ashley Furniture. But, but, furniture. But, but the people listening are going to say, it's okay for Dennis to say that because he's got a zillion quintillion, zillion followers. So he, or Vanachuk, Vanachuk can say this stuff because they've got all these followers. But if you're a five person agency just setting up in, in the middle of London and you don't have all that stuff, you don't have the traction, you don't have the followers, then there's a sense that, Oh, what Dennis is saying, what Gary is saying is, is cool for the big guys. They can do that because they've got 20 years of experience. But here are we in year one with our 10 followers. And even if we write really brilliant content, no one's ever going to find us. So let's try and buy some traction, surely. Yeah, absolutely. Run Facebook ads, run LinkedIn ads, you know, buy, buy the traffic, overcomes the chicken and the egg. But just because you don't have to be a mega agency or a Gary Vaynerchuk or a keynote speaker like you and me flying around the world, right? Even more so, you should focus around the lighthouse client. That client, you know, let's say it's a pro sports team. Let's say it's the dentist. Like whatever that client is that you like, that you've demonstrated success with, demonstrate you can do that 10 more times, 100 times. You've documented how. You can repeat it. Do you have Chick-fil-A where you are, Robert? Yeah. In okay. some places, most sandwich. people know what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they don't have hamburgers or pizza, do they? That's they right. just do their chicken sandwich. It's good. Do that. Do that one thing. People talk about niching, you know, working on your, your the e myth, all that stuff. Same, those are all the same thing. As an agency, do that one thing repeatedly. That's when word of mouth will work. If you're a one person agency, I'm sure you have that one client that you've done something good for that you want to repeat. And maybe you have five or six clients. I bet you three or four of them you don't like. Or the, the ones that are the worst, fire them. There's one of these ones that pay you. There's one that pay, pays you more than the other ones and treats you better. Get more people like that and fire the rest. Double your prices and you'll find out who really loves you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so, so a lot of the people watching are probably in that, that range of 10 to 50 people agencies, 10 to 80 people agencies. They're at that kind of scale where they're, they're too big to be small, too small to be big. Yeah. So... Uh, what does Dennis, when he's a bit, a bit hungry and angry because he's not eaten any food for a couple of hours, what angry. do you say to these people? What, do you, what is your finger wagging advice to these guys and gals? Hey, the fact that you can get to a dozen, 20, 30, 40 people in your agency, which probably it means you're three or four million dollars a year, that's great because that means you've scaled beyond the independent contractor, freelancer, consultant. The, the consultant can usually do about $250,000 a year and that's about all they can do as one person. And then they start to sub out deals and then they start to hire people full time and then pretty soon they have a team. But I see people cap out right around 
50. It's like a Dunbar number, right? Because you can, you can have managers, right? And the managers can have other managers. But if you, if you say, like, one person can manage six people, right? Yeah. Six people can manage 36 people, then you're the boss, right? But then the minute you want to go a little bit bigger than that, beyond 50, then you have a manager of a manager of a manager. And that is really, really hard to do. And when you have 50 people in a company, I know what that was like. I kind of, you know, long for the old, old days. You could, you remember everybody, right? And you knew everyone by name. And there are people in our company, I do not know who they are. And that's kind of scary, isn't it? You, like, who are these people? And are they doing good work? What are they working on? I don't know. There's too many people in our company for me to know, right? And I have to be okay with that. I have to trust the other people that, are, that they're using the processes, that they're loyal to the company, that they're, there's a P&L structure, all these different things. You don't have to grow. There, a lot of people, there's this lie, you need to grow to be a 500-person agency. No, but if you do want to grow, then you need to be able to release yourself from the operations. And that's why we built all these checklists. Because, hey, it was fun in the beginning to be a cook and mess around in the kitchen. Do you really want to spend 10 hours a day in the kitchen? I don't want to. In fact, if you look at my calendar, I'll show you my calendar. I maybe have five or six meetings a week. That's it. My, my calendar is open because I want to do what I want. I'm going to, in a couple of days, to New Zealand, and I'm going to jump off the tallest bungee on the planet. And I'm going to do all kinds of fun things and play for a few days, which is the whole laptop lifestyle lie you hear from other people. It's only possible when you have a lot of process. I invest heavily in process so I can have freedom. That's the irony. If you want freedom, you must invest in process. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. So uh, let's just, um, I mean, I just love this conversation. I think we could go on for hours. We could have a part two, a part three, a part four, a part five. Because there's, uh, you know, I've just been working with a bunch of really successful uh, entrepreneurs, uh, agency owners. And it's exactly this conversation where, where just very briefly, the, the table the, the, on my left of the table of people with less than 10 staff and on my right of the table with more than 50, more than 100 staff. And the guys and gals with the 50 and 100 staff say, you know what? It was so much fun when we were sitting where you are now. And now yeah. it's like really hard work. And then we did the maths with them. If you sell a 25 person agency, let's just keep the numbers really, really simple. You own 100% of the agency. You might take, if you're doing 2 million turnover, let's make the math three really simple. You might, you might take $2 million out of the business after mm -hmm. five years. Great. The guys who've got 150 people in the agency, they've been to VC funding twice. They've got 150 people that are turning over you know, $15 million. It's all fantastic. They can sell the business for $20 million but they've only got a 10% shareholding in the business because the they sold all their shares away. So they yeah. work the extra five years and they get less money, you know, and look at the bags under their eyes and they've not seen their children for five years and they don't know who their wife is. So they may have a big car and a big house. So who's the happiest, who's the happiest guy in the room? You know, I just, anyhow, enough of that. Uh, so final thoughts from you, Dennis, just uh, your two or three one liners. You want to leave people just, just, thinking about, and then we'll wrap up the call. I would ask you, if you're still spending time with us here, thank you. Are you here to build your empire, which is building your ego and have as many people and this whole thing to impress? Or are you doing it because you have a deeper mission? Because there's something you care about. Like for us, we are creating jobs for young adults as digital marketers, and our company makes no money at all. Every dollar we make is reinvested back into this training system because we lose money in these specialists that are coming through qualification at level one and level two. We're losing money on them, even though they're only making $10, $15 an hour. When you have some mission that's so clear, then it's not about trying to sell your company for $2 million or $10 million. It's not about profit. It's about heart and mission. And I can tell you, because people say, oh, how'd you get Nike as a client? How'd you get the, oh, so because you've been in the business forever. No, it's because these people that make the decisions at these various companies. They're not monoliths, they're people. And the people want to make, want to do business with the people they like. And when they know you care about them and you're pleasant, I'm probably not the most competent digital marketer out there in all these different areas. I know I'm not, I don't pretend to be, but I do say that I'm one of the most expensive because I want to have the extra room 
to be able to, to charge more, not because I'm trying to make a fat profit, but for the just in case to cover failure, to cover taking the clients out to a nice basketball game and have a nice meal. And it's just nicer that way to be able to pay our people well, instead of you know, you're struggling with cash. It's probably because you're not charging these clients enough. Then you, they're not giving you enough money for you to be able to do good work and have a buffer. You know, the airlines, you, you can't take off unless you have enough gas to fly there and to the next airport and another 90 minutes. That's a rule by the FAA, right? You need to build that buffer in and you will find when you double your price, a few people will leave you. They're the ones you hated anyway. Do that and I want to hear what happens in your business. Hmm? <laughs> oh, I just love it. I just love it. It's, uh, it's so good. Uh, Dennis, it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you as always. Uh, just keep on doing what you do and do more of it because, because you <laughs> are generating conversation and, you're, and, and some people feel like their body blows, but you're really making people think you're really challenging their assumptions. And that's, that's why people love to hear you. So I'd just like to say thank you so much for your time and thank you for sharing with us. It's been an absolute pleasure to be talking to you. Thank you very much, Dennis. Thank you, Robert and friends. Appreciate it. Okay. Cheerio.